Though you may not think it, this current generation's technology is truly powerful and impressive. Moreover, current consoles utilize features that previous generations simply could not. One of those features is upscaling, something I initially believed to be one of the most important and beneficial technologies a console can take advantage of. Though new to console, PCs have taken advantage of these upscaling technologies for a while. There are essentially two well-known options to pick from. One is NVIDIA, who has a rendering technique for upscaling called Deep Learning Super Sampling, or DLSS. The other option is AMD, whose rendering technique is called Fidelity FX Super Resolution, also known as FSR. For reference, DLSS is currently on its third version, DLSS 3, while AMD's FSR is on its second version, FSR 2, specifically it's on update 2.2 as of now. Studios may also use their own upscaling tech as well, such as Insomniac using temporal upscaling in their games. Regardless, for the purposes of this video, we're mainly going to look at FSR since the current consoles are outfitted with AMD technology, so only FSR can be used. So what is the purpose of upscaling and how does it work? With FSR, it renders a frame at a lower resolution and then, by using an upscaling algorithm, makes the frame look like a higher resolution. So what does this mean in layman's terms? Well, it means the game is natively running a resolution, say 1080p, and FSR is upscaling it to look like, for example, 1440p by using its algorithm. It essentially takes data from previous and current frames to help reconstruct the image at a higher resolution, basically using that frame data to fill in pixels needed for that higher resolution. Why this is important is because instead of needing the graphical power or processing power to render a game at a native 1440p, you actually only need the power to render it at 1080p. Once at 1080p, you can use FSR to upscale it to 1440p. In the same way, upscaling can help with performance as well by allocating the extra unused resources and power towards the frame rate. It allows consoles and GPUs to hit above their weight class, running games at a higher resolution and or a higher frame rate when they otherwise could not. I also wanted to say one last thing before getting into the good and bad of upscaling. Those with PCs have the luxury of choice. The PC gamers can change more settings but can also pick from a variety of options for FSR or DLSS. The options range from modes heavily using upscaling to modes that only use a little. On console, the devs don't give direct options such as these. Console gamers choose the general modes given, often quality or performance modes, and within those modes, devs have already tuned and decided how much or little upscaling will be used. Now with this out of the way, let's move on. So let's start with why FSR and other upscaling in general is great when done correctly. As I've already said, the game looks much better. Playing a game at 4K is a noticeable difference than 1440p and especially 1080p by comparison. In the same vein, playing at a steady 60fps at a good resolution is infinitely more noticeable than playing at 30fps at that same resolution. Say a game runs at 1440p natively but only runs at 30fps. Additionally, the game can only run at 60fps when the resolution is at a native 1080p. Correctly implemented, upscaling essentially allows that 1080p mode to be boosted to 1440p while maintaining that 60fps performance. Upscaling is also a great way to include ray tracing and other graphical intensive features in a game because upscaling can do some of the heavy lifting. With these examples in mind, it gives great benefits to developers as well. It offers them a workaround in many instances as well as flexibility. Say they only can get a game natively running at 1200p, but want a higher resolution. With FSR, the devs now have more options, they can boost the resolution, performance, or both. Or they can just use upscaling to allocate processing power elsewhere. The benefits of flexibility also extend back to the gamers, more so those on PC at the moment. Like I previously said, PC gamers get to tinker around with different FSR or DLSS modes offered allowing the gamer to fine-tune what performance and resolution they want. Additionally, it extends the life of consoles and graphics cards as well, because upscaling can be used to play the most modern, intensive games many years after the console or GPU came out. Lastly, the final benefit I will mention is this. If done well, the average gamer won't notice a difference. I say average gamer because inevitably you have LTT, Gamers Nexus, Digital Foundry, etc. all attuned to noticing the shortcomings and cons of upscaling in a game. 
No matter how well implemented, they can pick out issues while playing. My point is upscaling does not need to be good enough to fool them, but instead just needs to fool the average gamer playing. So some examples of it done well. One is Hogwarts Legacy. Hogwarts Legacy actually uses FSR 1, the first version of FSR. The final result is not perfect to the trained eye, but for the average gamer, you're likely not going to notice. Forspoken at launch was a mess, but it runs very stable now, and it uses FSR 2, so it's a good example of FSR being used well. Not a good example of many other things, but whatever. But perhaps one of the better examples is Cyberpunk on consoles, oddly enough. The game launched horribly, but the place it's in now is great. Last year, the devs switched some things around and implemented FSR 2, specifically 2.1, in an update for consoles. In this example, FSR 2.1 replaced the previous tech being used. The consensus is that it's a great upgrade. It enhanced image quality, all while mostly maintaining the original target range for resolutions. But of course, everything comes at a cost, and there are trade-offs of using upscaling, so let's dive in. First, an obvious negative is that it is not the true resolution being advertised, so if you care about playing at native resolutions, this will be an issue for you. Most of the time, an upscaled resolution is not perfectly the same as a native one. The image being shown won't be as sharp as a native resolution image. So if you notice a difference in care, it is an issue. More noticeably, it may leave visual artifacts. Here's one example in action. This barbed wire fence is definitely not supposed to look like this. Specifically, because of fast-moving images, there is something called ghosting that can occur. Ghosting is simply when an object or something on the screen leaves behind a ghost of itself or trail. Using early versions of FSR1 is an issue as well. FSR1 is regarded as not being too good since it's AMD's first go-around at upscaling. The second version, on the other hand, FSR2, is very good by comparison, and it's apparently easy to make the switch from FSR1 to 2, but for some reason some developers just don't update the game to use FSR2 instead of 1. But honestly, this won't be an issue that lasts forever, as FSR2 becomes more and more adopted by everybody in the industry. But of all the issues, the biggest problem I've seen is that some developers are using upscaling as a main solution for their game's performance and visual issues. Often, upscaling should be used to get the game to the next resolution tier, as I like to call it, such as going from 1080 to 1440p, or 1440 to 2160p, which is 4K. If devs can get a great resolution, such as over 1200p, but can't quite get to that 1440p target, then FSR as a solution is outstanding. It's such a small jump that any negatives of upscaling wouldn't really be noticeable at all. However, that's not what is happening here. What is happening is that some devs are heavily relying on upscaling, which may not inherently be bad. But once it's mixed with another method devs often use, called dynamic resolution, it causes large issues for upscaling. Dynamic resolution is simple. It lowers the resolution temporarily to maintain the game's FPS target. Say you're in a big fight and the game usually runs at 1080p at 60fps. But between all the effects, textures, and everything on screen, it's too much for the console or GPU to handle at that 1080p resolution without losing frames. So what does the game do? It dynamically lowers the resolution temporarily to allocate power elsewhere to maintain that FPS target. In other words, you're basically running around doing nothing, it's at 1080p. When you're in a huge fight, it's 900p temporarily. When done well, you would never notice. But unfortunately, this is what's contributing to this giant negative of upscaling in certain titles. Let's see the problem in action. You knew it was coming, Jedi Survivor. The resolution mode goes between 972 to 1440p dynamically and is up-res to 4K, but egregiously, the performance mode ranges from 648p to 864p, and that's up-res to 1440p using FSR2. So now you see that this dynamic resolution is now causing an issue for the upscaling. The range is way too low in order to up-res it to a 1440p image. And because of this, the game does not look good in many instances. Let's not forget the PC release either. Whoa, 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 hey, 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 hey! Where a 4090 couldn't run this game at all. So yes, these aren't the most competent devs ever. And of course, you also knew this one was coming, Final Fantasy 16. It's using FSR 1. Oh no! Once again, the performance mode targets 1440p up-resed from 1080p, while quality mode is 4K up-resed from 1440p. 
And like Jedi Survivor, the performance mode is a real issue. It drops to as low as 720p at times, but it's still trying to be up-res to 1440p. It looks not good. You what? And all at the same time, it performs mostly like crap in performance mode especially. Great extra year of polish. Ah! Like I said earlier, put in FSR 2 instead of 1 later on, it's not the hardest thing to update it. Anyway, in both these games, FSR is needing to upscale from such a low pixel count to a high one, usually 1440p. Basically, FSR is being overextended here. Going from 648 or 720p to 1440p in a badly optimized game is way too big of a leap for FSR. But why are big resolution leaps an issue? Because remember how FSR works, it takes previous and current frame data and reconstructs the image using that data when up it. The more pixels you have, the more information it can gather. Here it only has data from a 648p frame with a much lower pixel count than 1440p. It's essentially trying to fill in all the pixels needed for 1440p with the pixel count of 648p. That's a big problem that results in a lot of visual artifacts appearing. Now I won't sit here and say the devs are necessarily lazy, maybe incompetent, but in the big game releases lately it seems they're using upscaling as the main solution for their game that looks or performs bad in its native resolution. But again, these are probably just the outliers since so many games do upscaling well. As a recent example, the Baldur's Gate 3 devs seem to have a good head on their shoulders for the PC version. Of course we'll have to wait until next month to see the console's performance and FSR 2 being implemented, but right now it looks very positive. Upscaling is so important to the performance and longevity of a console or GPU, and it's an incredible feature that's only going to get better. The third update to FSR is rumored to be releasing soon, and it's only going to provide more and more benefits for developers and gamers as the technology improves. Though it's being misused right now by some developers, upscaling does not need to be a double-edged sword. When done correctly, the advantages heavily outweigh any disadvantages. Ultimately, whether it's FSR, DLSS, or another upscaling technique, I am looking forward to the future and am excited about the benefits upscaling will continue to bring. But anyway, thanks for watching and feel free to give your own thoughts as well. I actually do enjoy reading them, believe it or not. So as always, I'll see you all in the next video.